afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your interest in the topic of soil erosion-induced CO2 flux in China. First, I'll introduce you some background information about both soil erosion and the greenhouse gas emission. Well, soil erosion uh, occurs in the river basins when the rainfall uh, when, when the rainfall detaches the soil particles in the river basins and, and the, the, soil, the detached soil particle will be delivered by the runoff. As, the, as one of the most widely distributed environmental problems in the world, soil erosion leads to uh, the land degradation, flood risk, and the non-point pollution in river basins. Well, another major concern of uh, the world is the greenhouse gas emission, which has caused the global warming and other environmental problems, such as the PM 2.5 pollution. Well, given that, the soil organic carbon pool is very large and active, and that the soil erosion greatly affects carbon uh, exchange process between soil and atmosphere, interactions may exist. Uh, between soil erosion and the greenhouse gas emission. So if we try to figure out the direction and the magnitude of the CO2 flux induced by soil erosion, it will provide us an opportunity to the synthetic control of both, these, uh, both of these two major uh, problems. So if we try to uh, realize this tar target, we have, uh, we have to first understand a little bit about the mechanisms uh, by which uh, extra CO2 flux will be introduced by soil erosion. Well, we can divide a small catchment into three parts. The erosional area where the soil particles are detached, the depositional area and the transport uh, area and uh, each area will uh, undergo uh, various carbon behaviors which lead to uh, significant uh, CO2 fluxes. And uh, these carbon behaviors are listed uh, in, in this slide. And uh, uh, of all these three areas, the erosional area, which has been marked in uh, the right box, is uh, the most, uh, is uh, co consumes most of the CO2 flux uh, compared with the other uh, two areas. So that's also the uh, focused area of this study. There are already a lot of studies uh, in the s uh, small watersheds uh, of around one square, uh, one square kilometers and uh, the CO2 consumption and the CO2 sequestration rate in the erosional area of the small uh, watersheds is uh, from 3 to 60 grams of carbon per square meter per year. And if we try to uh, extrapolate a little bit based on these uh, studies in uh, small watersheds, uh, we can find out the total CO2 sequestration rate in the erosional area of the w in river basins of the world. Uh, roughly equals to one fifth of the CO2 emission uh, by the combustion of fossil fuels. So that's very uh, that's a significant amount of CO2 sequestration occurred in the erosional area of uh, small watersheds. Uh, although there are already a lot of studies in the scale of small watersheds. Uh, studies try to uh, assess the CO2 uh, flux of large-scale large area is very lack, uh, like an uh, area uh, in the scale of China uh, where uh, uh, soil erosion is very severe and the total erosional area sum up to over one million uh, square kilometers. Uh, there are two major difficulties in the assessment in, uh, of large-scale area. The first difficulty is that data required for small-scale method is very difficult to collect at the large scale. Uh, uh, for example, uh, some method uh, in a suitable in a small-scale uh, assessment requires the crop's characteristics and another uh, method that requires the vertical distribution of organic carbon of the uneroded soil profiles. So that's all very, uh, they are all very difficult to collect in a, 
uh, if we try to assess the CO2 flux in a, a very large area, this uh, uh, data are very difficult to, to acquire. The second difficulty is that the scale up method from the local scale to a, a larger uh, scale uh, is also very black. So correspondingly, uh, the targets of this, there are two targets of this research. First, we try to improve the method for small watersheds so that it allows uh, data inputs from remote sensing images, the national survey data sets, etc., uh, which are relatively easier to obtain at large scales. And the second target is that we try to develop a scale up method based on the concept of a minimum polygon. And next, I will uh, try to explain the core idea of these uh, methods. Uh, well, the most classic uh, method uh, used in a small water, uh, used to calculate the CO2 flux in small watersheds is, president, is presented by Van Oost and his colleagues and published in Science in 2007. And uh, uh, this is the most classic method, and our improved method is based on this classic one. Well, uh, there are three mechanisms that lead to the change of organic carbon in soil profiles. The first mechanism is the composition and the decomposition of organic carbon uh, under a static condition, which means that no soil erosion or deposition occurs. The second mechanism is the uh, soil organic carbon loss through, uh, soil, uh, through erosion. And the third mechanism is the uh, extra uh, <coughs> CO2 flux induced by the interaction between uh, soil erosion and uh, composition, decomposition of organic carbon. So uh, in the method presented by Van Oost, uh, he uh, measured the uh, soil organic carbon content in the soil profile in a stable area where uh, no erosion or depletion occurs to reflect the uh, uh, organic carbon content uh, subtract, uh, subtract of the uh, carbon loss through the first mechanism. And then he modeled the uh, organic carbon loss the process through, uh, soil, through the second mechanism. And then he compares the modeled and measured uh, organic carbon content to to obtain the uh, uh, the carbon exchange through the third method, that is the erosion induced uh, item of uh, carbon, carbon, carbon loss. So in our uh, the the problems of this classic method is that he has to uh, measure the uh, organic carbon in the uh, soil profile of a stable of a stable soil soil profile. And also, he uh, uh, also uh, uh, try. Uh, if we try to use this method, we also uh, have to know the start year of the uh, of of soil erosion to uh, calculate the uh, to calculate the CO two flux rate uh, every year. Uh, so. Uh, if we try to improve this method, we present we 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 introduce uh, we introduce the first order connecting connecting model to uh, to, uh, to to get the uh, organic carbon content of the uh, soil profile in a uh, stable stable area, and uh, by introducing this model, we also uh, uh, we we can also flexibly uh, choose the model period and avoid the second uh, shortcoming of Van Oost's method. So uh, we compare the results uh, of the produced by the two models, and uh, we can see that uh, the results agree with each other uh, of the two models. So we can use the we can use this method for the further. Uh, uh, estimation uh, of, of our research. 
Well, another problem that uh, another problem is that we don't have a, a scale up method uh, to extrapolate the results at the local scale to the uh, regional or continental or global scale. Uh, suppose that we, uh, if we try to uh, assess the CO2 flux in a very large area, we can. It is ridiculous to divide this. Uh, large area into millions of small watersheds based on the uh, DEM data because this process is very time consuming. Uh, if we try to extract the boundary of small watersheds, uh, the resolution of the DEM uh, will be uh, very fine and it's very time consuming. So uh, we, we can't use this method to uh, to upscale our results from the local scale to the to the larger scale. So uh, here we introduce the concept of minimum polygon. What is a minimum polygon? A minimum polygon uh, refers to a continuous area uh, containing uh, a uniformly distributed geographic factors such as the soil emotion rate, the net uh, net primary production. Uh, uh, carbon pool turnover rate and other geographic uh, factors. Uh, so if the all these uh, parameters uh, to calculate the CO2 induced flux is uniformly distributed, we can safely suppose that the CO2 uh, flux induced by soil erosion is also evenly uh, uh, distributed in a minimum polygon. So if we uh, in, input all the uh, parameter, all, all the layers of parameters in the GIS uh, software, and uh, we carry out the operation of overlay, and uh, we can quickly derive uh, millions of uh, minimum polygons. And uh, uh, the the next we 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 should do is to calculate the CO two flux of each. Uh, within each minimum polygon and uh, sum them uh, up to get the total one. So once we solved the uh, two difficulties we mentioned, uh, uh, we mentioned just now, we can uh, try to assess the CO2 flux induced by soil erosion in China. So first, uh, we collected uh, data of soil erosion in two uh, in, in in 1990s and. Uh, 2010s, and also the uh, 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 soil organic carbon content uh, data all, all over China from uh, several national surveys with the support of the Ministry of Water Resources of China. We collected this data, and uh, we also extract the net primary production data and the carbon turnover data from 10 global carbon uh, cycle models. We extracted uh, the part of China from the global map. And uh, use these uh, this, this data la layers, we uh, generate millions of, millions of minimum polygons, and then we calculate the CO2 induced, uh, the CO2 flux induced by soil erosion of each minimum polygon, and then we uh, sum, them, sum them up to derive the, the, the total one. And the results shows uh, that the natural carbon removal in 1990s and the 2010s is uh, 180 plus minus 80 uh, megaton of carbon per year, which is uh, comparable to the total uh, uh, organic carbon removal of, uh, of the continent of Australia and, and Europe. And this flux has decreased by 44% uh, in the past 20 years due to soil uh, conservation, because we uh, use the data of soil erosion in both uh, 1990s and 2010s, so we can uh, we can uh, calculate the difference between uh, these two sets of data and uh, find that uh, there is the significant de decrease 
uh, in the past 20 years. And also, the southwest region where Young's River and uh, Yellow River stem suffer most from uh, soil carbon loss. So uh, if any of you have visited China, you will know that the uh, Young's River and the Yellow River are the two most uh, uh, largest uh, rivers in China. So the southwest region is very important uh, in, uh, in, in China. Uh, this region suffer, suffers the most from uh, soil carbon loss. And also, uh, and also we uh, calculate the uh, CO2 flux induced by soil erosion uh, using the improved method and the upscaling method we mentioned before. And we find that in 1990s and the uh, 2010s, the total erosion induced CO2 sink in China is 47 plus minus 24 megaton of carbon per year, compressing 10 to 37 percent of the terrestrial carbon sink in China. So that's a very significant part, uh, which implies us that the erosion induced the CO2 flux, flux cannot be ne neglected if we try to uh, if we uh, try to study the global carbon cycle. And this flux also decreased by 16% in the past 20 years due to soil conservation. And we also analyzed the uncertainty, uh, mainly considering uh, the source in, uh, induced by uh, net primary uh, production and uh, carbon turnover rate. And uh, uh, as the very important uh, index reflecting the potential of carbon recovery uh, from the carbon loss due to soil erosion. The vertical and the lateral carbon fluxes ratio, the VLR, is uh, a very important index and is calculated to be 0.25 averaged all over China and uh, is comparable to Van Oost's estimation of 0.26 in Europe and, uh, and the US. So uh, this means that about one-fourth of the carbon loss due to soil erosion can be recovered through the recovery uh, mechanism occurred in the erosional area of river basins. And also areas with very high VLR uh, are uh, the North China region and the Southwest region and areas with low VLR are Northwest region and Inner Mongolia. Uh, now let's uh, summarize the main findings. Let's summarize the main findings of this research. Well, soil erosion by uh, soil uh, erosion induced the CO2 flux has greater significance in the global uh, carbon cycle. However, little information is available at uh, uh, scales larger than points for few small watersheds. And this study is the first attempt to quantify the lateral transport of soil carbon and the, the consequent CO2 flux uh, induced during this uh, process. And, uh, uh, and we assessed the uh, CO2 flux of China, uh, which has been experienced uh, uh, very severe soil erosion uh, during the past several decades. And the, this results confirm that the, uh, it's very significant uh, uh, of the lateral soil carbon transport by erosion process in the global carbon cycle and uh, also highlights the importance of, redu of reducing uncertainty in assessing the terrestrial carbon balance due to soil erosion. And that's how uh, Thank you for your attention. Uh, is there any question? This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.